What's up fam? Welcome to Joint Minds. I'm John. I'm Jeremy. And I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And in today's video, we'll be discussing America and the narrative that it's the greatest country in the world. And if you guys enjoyed this today's video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to be no notified whenever we post another video, hit that little notification bell. And for all y'all haters that really want to talk shit in the comment section below, make sure you actually fucking do it! All right, dude, so America used to be like considered like the best country in the world, like, you know, through the industrial era, like in the 1900s. But like now we have like a lot of competitors uh -huh. like China, Russia, Europe, Europe. and several other like several other countries. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about America's status as the best country in the world or the, the previous claim that America is the best country in the world? The claim that America is the best country in the world. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a stance a lot of Americans take, and it could just be oh like, like God, America's bro. ignorance, too. I hate that. It could just be American uh, ignorance. Yeah, you know, like, as an American, dude, like, you know, the thing is, though, is, like, you got to kind of, like, first, like, determine, like, what actually makes the best country in the world. You know what I mean? Because it's, like, really, I feel like that's a, such a very, like, subjective, like, view. So I feel like there's a lot of like factors that like could actually go into like contributing like to what the best country in the world is, you know? Like, what are you thinking? Like, give, give me an um, example for one. It's like, obviously you could first start with how educated the citizens are, you know what I mean? So like the education system, um, you know. Well, what are we talking about with education system? Like, are we like, um, are we talking like, like our uh, upper level education, like our colleges are, are supposed to be considered some of the best in the world. I mean, yeah, like, there's some of the best in the world, but there's, like, many other countries with, like, great, like, colleges, too. Like, you know, the UK has Oxford, like, which is probably definitely one of the top five, you know, and then I'm sure there's, like, a couple in Switzerland or, you know, other yeah, European countries. Yeah, but when you talk about, like, a accumulation of uh, having top colleges, like, US has, like, um, like more top colleges than, like, I'm pretty sure any other country in the world. Okay. We, 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 like, take, like, a top 50 or something like that, we have... A, okay, but just having top... But just having top colleges doesn't, like, necessarily mean the education is the best, because, I mean, like, the US still scores, like, pretty low, like, in terms of, like, education scores, like, in high school and, like, middle school, and even in, like, universities, like, the term... The type of careers, like, they go into, like, they usually don't score, like, higher you know so you're talking about like our lower education when we're talking about education like our k through 12 i mean i think so i mean i think that's like where like the majority of like education comes from like i mean i think it's kind of hard to put a like value of a country based off of their privatized education i mean because wouldn't the value of the country have to be what the citizens have access to Okay, so like we're so we're basically going to be comparing this from a K through 12 like basis, right? Um, I don't think the thing is is I don't think it necessarily has to be on like a K through 12 basis because a lot of like other really developed countries, like most European countries, offer um, public education for like universities, so like ter tertiary education, you know. So it's like it kind of has to be like all education, like as a whole, not just like privatized, you know. Okay, well then, okay, public education. Well then, how do you feel about um, comparing education systems of countries that like um, follow other countries' education systems? So like, I know like some uh, Middle Eastern countries take uh, the UK's education system and implement it into their education system. So how, how do you feel about comparing those countries' education systems when they steal, steal it from another country? Um. I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as it shows like positive results. I mean, data is data, you know, like if the country's education as a whole improves from them stealing someone else's education system, then I don't think that's necessarily a problem. Oh, no, no, no. What I'm saying is like they'll literally like they'll send their they'll take their exams and like whatever process that like the UK goes through, whatever exams that they take at that certain parts of the year, they'll take the exam in their own country and then send it all back to the UK to have it like graded and all this like other type of stuff. They won't have it done in their own country. 
um it's like it's not it's not like it's the country like just taking the idea of what they do they they literally are so like they're outsourcing taking, their education yeah they're outsourcing their education so like how do you like what i'm asking is how do you say that this country has a good education system if they're outsourcing their education um or would you just say that the? I mean, the that would. I, I feel like that kind of credit would just go to the UK's education system, not necessarily like whatever Middle Eastern country would be doing that. Then um, I don't know what country you're talking about specifically, but if a country was doing that, I think the credit should go towards the country that they would be copying. Then, if they were just completely outsourcing it and having it graded by them and tested by them, right? Yeah, but then how? Um... Because we're we're using education as a I think, part, but I think of... I think we I think what like um the thing is is like we're basing education are we trying to base education ranking as like their value like how high they test and like the scores basically. I think we should think about um how what the education system actually provides to the um students. In, in a sense, not necessarily like their their average testing scores i think like what it, what it, what opportunities are given because you could have okay. a great education system that teaches you like the highest of academics but if it doesn't provide you with the right opportunities to actually apply that into the real world or like find a transitioning point into the real world then i feel like that education system is pointless because it's not gonna it's not practical at okay the end of the day. so um what i think if we were to try to like look at something like that, then wouldn't we have to look at like, would it necessarily be like the amount of entrepreneurs created in a country like that has public tertiary education? Because obviously, I hate to say it, obviously a country with free public tertiary education, like uh, universities is obviously, I hate to say it, blatantly ahead of a country that doesn't have like free tertiary education would it how how so though i feel like because your education is more because, privatized you have to provi provide a better quality instead of having it subsidized by the government okay but if that was true then why does the united states still still test like some of the lowest in like math and science and english too like okay. they're like 38th or like 24th in science and like 38th in math yeah but that doesn't have that's th that but that you're trying to attribute college to the education system of the K through 12 which are completely different entities here because you have to pay for it and you you basically pay for the certain level of education you get for that's why that's people pay based off of the PISA test results school. that's based off of the PISA test results what's the people what do you mean PISA test results PISA like, it's like a, actually is a um, I'll just read it from Google right here the Programming for International Student Assessment is a worldwide study by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Member and Non-Member Nations intended to evaluate educational systems by measuring 15-year-old pupils' scholastic performances on mathematics, science, and reading. So it's actually for K-12. through So even in the public education that the United States is being compared to with the other ones at the lower level they are still far behind okay but then how is that how does having free like higher level education attribute to k through 12 how does having isn't that what you're saying by having a, a free tertiary education that you're saying like your, your upper level education is free correct like your college your university yeah because they go more into like direct like trading like like skill jobs you know what i mean like teaching those like that level of education is always pretty much like higher regarded than public education like k through 12. like colleges and universities like when you go there for a degree but is that is that necessarily is that necessarily true that all all countries that have free upper level education for uh focus their lower a lower level education on the real world um because like the way the way I view it and some how I've seen like I heard some of my friends from um, uh, Syria and then some from my friends that went to school in Greece told me that th that's their school what they would do is instead of giving you like random electives in high school like how they do in America where you have like like woodworking art and uh -huh. stuff like that 
they would actually be like, oh, do you like want to go into business or do you want to go into engineering or doctor or something? Like if you have an idea in high school uh -huh. and they'll base your electives based off of that yeah. industry. So you have so you have an understanding of it, its practical applications. Uh -huh. Whereas here, like they give us like wood shop and art and, you know, not to knock those subjects, but there's not too many people that are trying to go into that industry unless it's a passion of theirs. Okay, so how does that knock down any of the countries that are offering the public tertiary education? I'm not saying that it necessarily does. I'm just saying that... I, the... think, I think your point just like boasts my point that like their education is better because they're offering them more specialized skills at like a younger age towards like actual career yeah, goals. Yeah, but and uh, that's, that's, why, that's what I was but, asking at the beginning though. That's yeah, all I was trying yeah, to play like. Yeah, is yeah. It, are you, it, does every country that offers free upper level education offer a system like that or no? Um, I think most of them do considering that they still boast some of the highest numbers. Most of those countries boast the highest numbers of um, happiest citizens like on the planet like that usually exceed the United States considering that the United States consists of one of the lowest like number of um, happiest citizens per capita. Yeah, but that, like, that doesn't necessarily mean that's their, like th that their happiness could be attributed to many other things. I think it could happiness- be having, uh, It could be having like free healthcare um, or a, like the state of their country. Well, I mean, and even Poland still, and like most of those countries do also like offer like those like things too. Like Sweden, Norway, um, Belgium, Germany, like the UK, like all those like places like offer free free healthcare and also like public um, education for universities. So it's like, okay, I mean they do that, but also you have to look at the opportunity that those countries give you for success. Um, in comparison to the U.S. Well, like. What do you mean, like, by opportunity? Like, because what? it's like, like, what is the opportunity? The thing is, like, the American dream. People want to come over to America because this is the country that you can actually make it and make it big. Whereas, like, in back in a lot of other countries in Europe, like, you could have the same skill set, but just due to the exposure and the environment, you just might not make as much money. Okay. Because of well, you, could be, you, could be providing you may, the same you may not make as much rate. money. You may not make as much money in that country, but you are making, but you're accumulating less debt and you are getting your education for free. And then with those skills and that, and that you like, the thing is, is in those countries still, a doctor still makes more than a plumber. Like it's just not 250,000 a year versus 50,000 a year. It's 110,000 a year versus 65,000 a year. That's the difference. And if we know in America, that's a still a big difference in standard of living because you can live off of $65,000 a year as a single male pretty comfortably in a one bedroom apartment, save enough money, invest, you can buy a house pretty quickly. Imagine $110,000 a year as a doctor in that country, but you don't have any debt that you've accumulated. That's $110,000 after tax. That would be like in Sweden where their tax rate for the top 1% or not the top 1%, but people who make, um, I think it's like one and a half just times the average income, their tax 57%. So they would make uh, an average doctor makes like 200,000 there. They would make about 110,000 or so. And that's still a so pretty I comfortable guess, living value though. Then huh? I guess, I guess it comes down to whether you value being able to make your bank account super big, or if you value not having debt and living a comfortable life. But it's like you can still make your bank account really big just through like investing like um what's it called i think um i can't remember if it's sweden or denmark one of them has no capital gains tax i think it's sweden that's why there's all those sweet banks the or swiss well, banks, no, no, or no, swiss no, banks. The, the reason why the swiss oh wait banks it might be are... switzerland it might be switzerland yeah they don't have any capital gains tax and they also have public well, education that's and the, big. The, the, the reason why they're big is because they don't have to disclose private like uh private information yeah because they don't and okay. because their banks are super privatized and people want to go there because they have no capital gains tax it fucking saves companies a ton of money literally billions every year and that's and literally um sweden produces more entrepreneurs and hosts more billionaires than any other country in the world per capita 
Like Sweden has like such good like a welfare system that people aren't afraid to like take risk because they're taxed at like, you know, if they make one and a half times like the income of like the average person, they're taxed so high. They're not afraid to take like risks because they have such a good welfare, welfare system. Most people who make a decent amount of money are paying those high taxes. So there's a lot of surplus in that money. So that makes for a strong welfare system, you know? And because of that strong welfare system, they're able to supply people with the opportunity for entrepreneurship because they don't have to take the risk of, you know, quitting their full-time job to try to, you know, start a business with no time and no money that they have. And that's what leads to Sweden having more entrepreneurs than literally any country by capita. Like, I think it's by the next leading country is like, it's like double. Like they're double the next leading okay, country. They, they might have the the um, highest like amount of entrepreneurs produced, but how big do those companies tend to get in comparison? They host the most billionaires in the war world. Like the most billionaires in the oh, world come, come from, from Sweden. That, okay, they come from yeah. that country. Okay, yeah. Okay. You're yeah. saying the host host billionaires? Like, so I was like, like, like they come like from a giant, like billionaire meeting over over there. That's how I was like, they host like. Where, where no, they... no, people gain most of their wealth. Okay. Like millionaires are created to billionaires, like through in Sweden. Like they create billionaires in Sweden. Okay, that's yeah. actually pretty crazy. I didn't even yeah, know that. yeah, dude. So it's like having like opportunity. Like the United States, like yeah, you have opportunity, but it's like. It like ultimately that comes down to freedom and it's like most countries like most developed countries have freedom like most people who are gonna see this you have the freedom to like watch this video some of you may not have like a lot of like political freedom based off of like where you're at you know like certain countries like Singapore is a really developed country that's like has a lot of great economic growth and prosperity and a lot of opportunity there and they're creating tons of millionaires like every year but they don't have a lot to say against like the government you know what I mean so it's like opportunity and freedom ultimately is like different, but like in terms of like business contribution and creating businesses, there are dozens of countries where you can become a millionaire or like a possible billionaire, you know? Like China, there are tons of billionaires in China and Eastern Asia. And no, I, okay, no, that makes sense. I guess I feel like a lot of people try to look at it from the perspective of just basically like, okay, we have Amazon, we have Facebook, we have Google, we have Apple that yeah. all came from like America. And those yeah. are like basically the biggest countries in the world and have like, yeah. every, everybody uses their products. And the, you know, the thing is, is I feel like, um, I feel like people are like kind of just seeing like, just like the face of like, that's America just hosts all the faces of these companies. You know what I mean? But the things that actually create these companies are in other countries. And those are where like where other billionaires are at. You know what I mean? Like all the iPhones are made in China. That's where like, there's gotta be a Chinese manufacturer who's a billionaire because he's helping supply Apple with all those iPhones, you know? No, yeah, that's true. So it's I like- I mean, but like everything we get is like comes from China, like pretty much everything you, every product you buy, you see made in China or in somewhere. Yeah. Or, so, or some Asian country in general. You don't see it really too much domestic like yeah, product. No, no. Well, not in the U.S. at least. Like we don't, we don't see shit here made in the U.S. I can't even remember the last time I saw something made in the United States. So I don't know. And it's like what like I don't know. How can we even say that like the United States has the most freedom when like we house twenty five percent of the world's prisoners? Okay, that kind of i feel like that kind of comes down to the system itself and also just like the inherent like racism of the country and the history of the country itself like when you like this i mean i mean that's pretty fucking bad dude like like that's, no, yeah, that's feel, pretty bad bro like you know it, it, it comes is down bad, to our history like, that's pretty bad history to have that is but i also don't feel like that's um like we've come a long way from like we're like thinking from what we like what america used to be i'm not like discrediting like dude there's still a shit ton of racism i was gonna say yeah, we've really come day. that long of a way but, dude like but we know okay but like you're really gonna compare when people were thought of as property to now we can actually people can have a civilized discussion with different races like that's a, that's a lot farther of a way than what we used to be i mean yeah like it's a lot like farther of a way but it's like 
it took us a pretty long while to get there, dude, and we're still struggling to do that, like, to this day. Like, come on. Oh, I, it's, like, not, it's not just the U.S., though, that struggles with racism. I, Every country struggles with racism, That's, bro. that's, not... I was, okay, you know what, you're absolutely right about that, because, like, every every country like definitely struggles with like racism towards like different like ethnicities like all the time dude yeah no it's like the like it's um go on no yeah it's just like in like like for example the blm movement like last year i'm like i'm not endorsing it or saying it was right or, or wrong but that that movement got so big it even started people in other countries um like in europe were starting to you know have riots and like like exactly. protest against them because it, it's not just it doesn't, racial it's tension. not just in it's not just in the united states you know it's not, yeah the racial tension is everywhere you in know, the world There's, you know what you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna take back basically what i said like about like the united states and like their history of racism because i was like oh like that doesn't make us great because like we just said every country and a lot of like citizens and like culture still like are like low-key still racist like to a lot of people and like they don't realize it you know what i mean so i feel like it's hard to like dock the united states like in terms of like you know how great we are like for that when it's like every like country has like basically done it and then you know i mean france technically still collects money from uh countries in africa you know so they technically oh, still I didn't have colonies. That. That's yeah crazy. yeah you know so you know look out for france guys um <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, back to, like, the topic of, like, opportunity, it's, like, I feel like opportunity kind of comes down to, like, actual, actual kind of freedom. You know what I mean? I kind of want to ask you, what, what do you really think freedom is? Because that's, like, such a big topic Whoa. about, like, what, like, what makes America so great is, like, we have freedom, you know? Okay, this is actually something that is very true. We have the freedom of speech and what i mean by this is in other countries you can actually go to jail for what you say in a business yeah setting. yeah and i'm not talking like the obvious sexual harassment type of stuff that you get in trouble here i'm mm -hmm. talking about like for example in canada there was a case where this man misgendered uh somebody i think she was a, tra a transgender woman and that man's business got shut down and he was sent to jail for a couple months because he misgendered somebody jesus yeah, yeah so in, uh, yeah. in certain countries yeah, you I, can get I, in so much trouble for for what you say whereas here you have the right to say to say whatever you want as long as it doesn't slander somebody's name it's like within with with i'm not gonna say good faith because people can say like pretty terrible things but as long as it's within like a place a place that isn't attacking somebody i guess I don't in, know in a way that you, dude, obviously, I, don't, I, I don't even dude, know how it works. There's, there's been many, many instances over the last several years where people have said things out, that were basically out of hate and attacking people that they did not go to jail for. And we all know what the fuck I'm talking about. We all know what's been happening for the last several years. Okay. So I don't believe that. But what I'm going to say, yeah, but but I, remember, hold, on, like, hold on, hold on. I agree with your point. That we are the only country, I believe one of the only countries, that does have freedom of speech actually put into law and put into the constitution. That you can't, like, it's like embedded in law, like the freedom of speech, you know? We're actually one of, like, the only countries, I'm pretty sure of that. Like, that it's written in our constitution, like, that, like, you can't take this law away, you know? so exactly and then we have like the but, second amendment which is like to protect to protect the first amendment yeah and it's like you know we have like an option a you know to like settle settle things peacefully but you know we have an option b for when things don't work out oh you know <laughs> okay i declare a duel <laughs> pulls out my cards my deck <laughs> <laughs> um but it's like dude like the thing is is like freedom of speech is like literally only one aspect of like freedom because like I mean, think about, like... What about freedom of choice of occupation? That's exactly what I was going to say, dude. Oh, my God. You literally read my mind, bro. Like, I was literally going to say, think about societal conditioning and, like, how we're, like, pressured into choosing certain jobs. Like, do we really have freedom when, like, we're literally basically, like, pushed by, like, everybody, like, we know and society that, like, we have to get these jobs or else we're not going to make a living? We do in the sense that we we may be pressured into it but we have the option to say no i'm gonna go pursue 
whatever I want, and I will suffer the consequences of that situation. But whether like, I make it successful, no, because this is the thing though. There are certain countries, like I know, like uh, like where my parents grew up, they they had to take an exam in their senior year of high school, and if they did not get a certain score, they could not pursue a certain uh, occupation in college. Okay. They could not if they if they wanted to go to like become a chemist and you know uh, become a pharmacist or whatever. They can't they can't go unless in high school. This is four years before you finish college that you get a certain score to, to say that you can go pursue this uh, education. Um, okay. It's like, I kind of get like that in a, in a circumstance like that or in a country like that, um, that that's kind of a lot of pressure to like kind of know where you want to go at like a young age. You know what I mean? And to like what field. So that's kind of like not kind of a real sense of freedom because like you don't even get to like really explore your options but it's like when you have countries like uh, i keep bringing up sweden because it's like sweden's pretty great it's like they have like such like an equality of income like their income equality is like so good like that it allows people to just pursue whatever career they actually want and, like, it's why they have one of the, like, happiest citizens on Earth, you know? Because all their education is free and their healthcare is free. Like, the freedom of choosing their occupation is literally, like, up to them because they know no matter what they're going to make a good living. Because they have strong labor unions. They're If they make a lot of money, they're going to get taxed a lot. And, like, it's kind of just been embedded in their society. So it's, like, kind of just once, you know, if we tried to do this in the United States, just once everyone got over it. You know, like, got over that, yeah, taxes are kind of high, but it's like, you know, you get healthcare and everything. Like, you know, you just get used to it, and then the standard of living would just ultimately go up for people, you know? Because inflation would become adjusted at some point. Okay, so then, when you put it like that, let's take the perspective of the rich person. That's like, if you were to transition, like, the econ like the American economy into something like this, where you say, to have higher taxes, to provide more public services. Why? What I endorse that as as a person that's you know making my own business or running my own business and uh, thriving from the current system, when I took all the risk and could have lost everything, and now you want me to give it to somebody that ha didn't even take all that risk. Um, because the thing is, is yes, like you as the entrepreneur and the creator of that business took all of the risk in the beginning. However, there's a co-symbiotic relationship between an employee and a business owner because an employee also takes an, not an equal amount, but they do take an amount of risk by getting employed by you because they are now putting their dependency and their income in your hands and you are responsible for it. So there is a co-symbiotic relationship of risk. And so when they take on that risk by getting employed by you, they are taking on parts of your risk as well in terms of the the value that, of the company that you have to produce. Because there's the three labors or the three factors of production. There's the land, the capital, and then the labor. And the employee is taking a portion of that labor. And the thing is, is yes, the business owner should make most of the money because they did take most of the risk and they own most of the capital. However, once they start stop producing most of the labor that is done to produce that capital, they shouldn't receive the majority of those labor profits. The thing is, is now that like employees, employee wages since the 1970s have only raised not even with inflation, I think. I believe it's they haven't raised with inflation or they've only raised a couple of percent above inflation. And um, But CEO wages since the 1970s have increased by 180 times. Like, that is a ridiculously staggering margin. And it all has to do with the dissol dissolvation of labor unions. You can see in data that th as labor unions dissolved, the wealth gap between the middle class, the upper class, and lower class, lower class began to widen. Like, literally, literally as the decades went. Like, literally coinciding. So, it's like, because you, yes, you took on that risk. However, the employee also puts their value and their livelihood in your hands and they take on that risk also and they put their livelihood into the hands of your management. So the employee also takes a risk. So I'm not saying that yeah, the employee needs to make 
I'm not saying the employee needs to make just as much as the business owner, but I'm saying the business owner doesn't need to make 180 times what the employee used to or makes. It should be like they're like a a 10 times gap difference is better than a 150 times like wage difference. Right? Like, I don't think it would. I don't think it would come down to 150 times. But more about my point when it comes to risk, though, is you as an employee choose to take your risk by working for this company. You choose to work there, whereas as the employer, I I, I get to choose my employees and who's going to produce my product, and that's up to my discretion. But I also choose to take on a huge loan under my name, and if I lose this money because I didn't manage properly. I'm the one that takes all the blame. Whereas you as an employee, you can get hired. I can follow out a business because of my poor management. I can also follow out a business because I didn't hire the right employee that could do, do the things effectively. That's true. And I, now, I, now, I, now I'm however much money in the hole and you can just go apply to the next job. That's, that is true. However, like we're, we live in the United States, okay? And there are like kind of bankruptcies and like i don't know like all the specific like bankruptcies and like all that that you can file but there are ways to protect your assets in the united states so that you don't lose everything and that you basically can basically lose lose everything and start over in like two years basically you know you can like, but then you have a really shit credit score and things are very very difficult well i'm saying i'm saying you can start over as in like you could get a new credit score within two years to get to take out another loan to start another business yeah, but if imagine if the, if you were in that situation in a different country, it wouldn't be like that. Yeah, no, Not it'd a be a lot. Country. It'd be a lot easier because they have public welfare systems. Because um, everyone who actually makes a lot of money is okay with paying uh, into their taxes because everyone is part of that economy. So they all contribute a good amount of money into the economy. So they have a good welfare system so that they don't have to take out loans to start a business. And not only that, a lot of these countries actually work many less hours than we do in the United States. Because the average work week in the United States is, I believe, it, um, 45 or 46 hours right now. While in like countries like Sweden, Switzerland, uh, Norway, Denmark, they're around 26 to about 33 hours of a work week. So they have free time. They have welfare resources if they don't have a job to start a business business if they wanted to and they also you know have like the opportunity of education to pursue passionate careers that they would want to start a business in okay so you're so we're taking the we're taking the let's pick you up uh pick, pick up each other approach throughout the economy versus exactly because I'm gonna... bro there's there's an old saying man a rising tide raises all ships do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? A rising tide raises all ships, man. Like, if then why all... is it though that we that a lot of people view it as America with all this opportunity and you can make it so well and so high as this is like the epitome or like the perfect like country for us or for in general? Like, it, like uh, all these you? facts that you're saying, it's like it doesn't it doesn't make sense. The white, you know, why you wanna, you people want to come out come over here so badly? <sighs> I think it ultimately comes down to like corruption, propaganda, and like the way how the media like portrays the United States because it's where their money is made. You know? Like we literally allow lobbying in the United States. We allow corporations to pay off and influence our legislature to be in the Is that favor. technically corrupt though because it's within the jurisdiction of the law? I mean, the law doesn't al isn't always correct, bro. The law used to allow slavery. No, yeah, that's very true. I like mean, that doesn't a, mean it's correct. Very, you could have very poorly designed laws, do we, but do we is, do we do you actually like do we think it's a okay to allow corporations to influence legislature that they know is not in the favor of the people, but in favor of only the corporation? Well, I feel like that also comes down to like corporate social responsibility in the sense that you choose who what companies you want to support if you feel like a company is doing something unethical and they're pushing for unethical things you don't have to go and buy their service there's so many that, that's the, like one yeah. of the great things is they don't they don't enforce monopolies here i think like the only service that you could consider as a monopoly is like energy providers like dte and things like that because 
that's so time. hard to have so many small like little businesses yeah. that are like energy providers yeah but other than that everything you can if you don't want to if you don't like how a company does business you don't have to purchase from them you can you can make a company change their policies by making their pockets hurt that's true and i mean i'm one of those people dude like honestly like when i find out like about like a business's like shady business practices like i like straight up refuse to eat there like um have you ever seen the founder no i haven't no okay it's the movie about mcdonald's and ray Kroc and how he like became the ceo of mcdonald's and he basically stole the company from like underneath like the mcdonald's brothers feet dude like he straight up like stole their idea like stole everything like you know i'm i'm way oversimplifying it but it's basically like it left such a bad taste in my mouth that i literally haven't eaten mcdonald's in six months like i like and i used to go to mcdonald's like pretty frequently just to get like a dollar drink you know like just to get like a diet coke man i love my diet coke but yeah dude like so it's like i totally get that perspective and like i guess that is like one of the great freedoms of like america is we have that like freedom of choice of like who we get to like support and stuff but it's hard to like say that we have like necessarily like because freedom is so complex it's like opportunity is one of those like most important things and like when you and i feel like we kind of do have more monopolies than like you kind of like said like we think we do because it's like 60 percent or 65 percent of all beverage products are owned by coke and pepsi yeah but that's not a monopoly you have two companies now okay so it's an oligarchy sure but so it's, it's not a, a monopoly you have okay. you have the choice to, to you have the choice to not support one brand okay but but the thing is is like 65 percent of all brands are coming from underneath two companies and the other companies i bet you can't even name i mean yeah but that just comes down to having a large name and having a, a platform which i feel like this is like one of the things that i feel like why people feel america is like the greatest country is because you can be insanely good at what you do and provide it to, to like a lot of people, but you, your name's not going to get out there. You can even see it in the music industry. There's some artists like in the UK, like rap, for example, the UK uh, rap scene that mm -hmm. are actually insanely good and in rap way better than a lot of the artists that like you hear on the radio out here. And they're, you don't even, no one knows their name. They're way better lyrically. Some of their like music just even sounds better. But because of the fact that they're not in America and they don't have that platform to be all over everybody's face, mm -hmm. you don't hear about them. But I feel like that's also just due to kind of like American consumerism of like media. Like the United States is basically like a cesspool of like a bunch of nations, like kind of just coercing as one nation. So like everything we hear, like it's passed around very easily because we're part of one nation, you know? Whereas, like, I don't yeah, know, but wouldn't that make it easier for like people from foreign countries to like basically promote their music? And now, oh, now it gets around to my friends. Like, oh, have you heard about so and so artists from I, Spain or so and so artists from you know um, China or something like that? The thing you know, is, is or, there's a lot of like music artists who just come from like those countries to the United States because that's really where they make their money. Is like the thing. And like yeah, so thing, wouldn't that wouldn't that also mean that the, the opportunity here is greater but because I think, of but that exposure? The, the thing is that I was gonna say is that like it's only like one certain media or one certain like genre that like you're really talking about. You know, you're talking about mu music artists and like Hollywood and stuff, and that produces a ton of money. Like yes, but it's like it's such to such a small number of people that like that doesn't like after or like justify the overall standing of a country's greatness. What about the medical industry? What about the medical industry? Here, the, the medical industry makes so much money. Why why is it also like considered one of the best like healthcare systems in the world, supposedly? It's not considered one of the best. Where? Where But it's thought to be. It's thought that's what I'm saying. The public perception is that that is that it is. No, it's not. I don't know anyone who thinks the American healthcare system is like good. You, you can get the the i'm I know, talking about the I service do, itself i'm not talking about uh, the insurance the insurances i'm not even dude no dude because in i live in california so in california dude there's so many people who go to mexico to get their surgeries done just because it's cheaper and it's the same shit no 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 there's they they go down there because but, it's cheaper but, 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 but it's but, not necessarily the same shit but, but we're talking about public perception is what you said 
Yeah. You said we're talking about the public perception, and I'm saying in Cal- Southern California, almost everyone I know who needs like a major surgery that isn't covered by their insurance goes to Mexico to get that shit done. Okay. Like dental work, like cosmetic surgery, like anything that their insurance like isn't like, okay, only pay 500 bucks and you'll be fine. Like anything that's not that, they're going to Mexico. Because, they, because they're like, fuck that. We're not going to pay these high prices here. The United States only pays the most in healthcare per GDP. That doesn't mean like they're putting that money like into it. It's just because of the high prices here. I mean, the prices um, for healthcare here are almost three to four times as much as they are in competing countries like Switzerland, Denmark, Germany. But then why, why are American doctors more valued then? That's the, that's the perception though. A lot of people like, they value because their of, doctor from because the US of pharmaceutical and shit more. Because of pharmaceutical because of pharmaceutical companies being able to influence Congress to um, no, impact no, 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 impact no, no, the no, wages. No, no, no. I'm talking about if I'm gonna if I get my my medical degree from the United States, uh huh, and I go back to another country back uh, in wherever in Europe or in the Middle East or in China or Asia. I am inherently more valued than if I than somebody that went to medical school in their local country because they assume you made more money here. Because the American oh. dollar is worth more and they assume you practice there. I'm I'm this is my assumption. Why would you become a doctor there and then immediately fly back? Everyone who like usually immigrates to the United States is there to make their money first and then send it back to their families in those foreign countries because the va- dollar the value or the dollar value is worth more in those countries. So they immediately That's not assume true. Um Kuwait Kuwait I, for example. Based off of my personal experiences and families that I know who have immigrated here like that is exactly what they do like kuwait's um for i'm going to say for for example kuwait's dollars is the most expensive uh currency in the world it's i think it's like three times more expensive than the u.s dollar and uh there's there's a lot of people that literally come here from like from there for their education and go back because they just prefer living over there um there's nothing it has not and okay but but do you know the the median income for like the kind of like job that they they would be getting out there like with the education they got there is it comparable to the united states are the living conditions comparable that it would make it worth it traveling back immediately there it's not for them it's not even the conditions it's literally they just prefer living in that country so but they but they go they come to the united states specifically because they will get paid more if they have an american degree or they, they got they got their education in america okay now as a Necessarily that they got their education in America, or is that they got it from that specific university? Because the thing no, is, even, like, the, even in if, America what if, in general, what if they went to Oxford? I mean, okay, you're using the the very niche example of like the top colleges that are like in in the world. I'm talking like imagine you just went to like a regular uh, like a regular college in uh, Europe versus like a regular college out in America. You you'll still get paid more in those countries. Um, like I'm not. I'm not even saying you know, like you just come to the U.S. and you go to Harvard. Yeah, I'm saying or, or like you go to Cal State or, UCLA. or something. Like yeah, you you just go to like a, 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 a not like not necessarily a local college, but uh-huh. like a, a good university. You know, yeah, not yeah, like like Cal State, tier, Fullerton, but, you, or you know, middle like, of the state. Know. You know, middle of the pack. Sacramento. You still get paid more. Um, what's it called? Uh, Humboldt. I don't know. Those are California colleges. I just know. But the thing is, is like, no matter what, the standard of living is higher in the United States. Even living shitty, even living in shitty Southern California with like a one bedroom apartment is still considered being in the top 1% of the world than living in like most like other like um, underdeveloped countries. Yeah, but do you know how they consider the 1% of the world too? Is they take the dollar as the main currency and compare the the value of how much money you make to the dollar and then you use that percentage of how much money you make and, ne- and not necessarily how much money you make in, a, in the u.s is comparable to how much you'll need to live in different countries across the world so you might nece- uh-huh. you might be richer by u.s standards than a lot of other people but you can live in a lot of other countries for a lot cheaper and have a basically same same doing the same stuff like you would do here uh-huh 
Yeah, I mean, you're you're right about that. I'm just um Yeah, I mean, you're right, dude. Like the United States doesn't have a great standard of living. Like you know, like in terms of like the amount of income most people are going to be like pulling in. And And when you look at it like in like what's what states are actually the nice places of the United States that people like tend to think of when they come? California, into? New York, um, Florida, uh, uh, Texas. Maybe. I don't know Florida, man. Like Florida, Miami. Yeah, my, well, people, I mean, yeah. like you know, Florida's nice in terms of like it's expensive, like you know, but it's like you know, it's Florida, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's like there's crazy the, stuff come that on, happens there's the, over there's there, the memes, but... bro. We know we know what Florida is all about. Yeah, I mean, there's the Florida man memes, but I'm just saying, like, it's still like a really nice like it's like it's the nice. southern yes, the yes, southern portion nice. of florida is literally for retirement yeah you're right yeah so um, it's like 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 those are the three main areas or four four main areas that people like think are like nice that they want to oh i guess if you do uh um, mardi gras you want to go to uh new orleans new orleans for that yeah, louisiana but, but there's very very niche like very very Some few people places like in Texas. such a big country some people like Texas for some reason. No, yeah, that was like the fourth know. one I yeah. said. Oh, 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 yeah. My bad, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, no, I said California, Florida, Texas, and uh, New York. Those are the four places. And what about the other forty-six states? Like, who wants to live in Alaska? Like, it's snowing year-round. Like, that does not sound yeah, like a, you get, like, two a place hours I didn't enjoy. Like every day, like for like six months out of the year. Like, fuck, man, that'd be depressing yeah. as hell, honestly exactly and then like the other side like the northern part of the united states is just winter and snow like half yeah. the year and then the other half the years it might not even be great weather and then you also got to consider the environment like some some states are literally just cornfields yeah that's true you know and like i guess when you kind of take into like yeah when you speak of like that like you kind of have to take into like how much of like the land is actually usable Cause dude, I saw like Loki. I saw st- I saw a stupid video that was talking about like why the United States is the greatest country in the world. Like it was trying to make the argument that it is, and they said its size. That was number one. Is its size? They were like the United States is massive. There's so many places to go. Like there's 50 states. Like, and that was the whole like argument for that. Like, that was, there was nothing like, oh, bro, we have, it was like, like, the best it, economy or something no, like that. No, well, I mean, there were those other things, but when, when it came to its size, it didn't, like, talk about, like, natural resources or, like, any of that. It didn't talk about how, like, the United States has, like, 133 million, like, gallons of oil or some or barrels of oil, you know? Like, like, they could have said, like, all that kind of stuff, but it's, like, they just literally said, like, how, like, it's, like, large. But, like, the thing is, is a lot of the United States doesn't have a lot of people in it you know yeah it's like the big, populations are very very small compared to the yeah uh, size of the state it's like when you looked at like you know like the, the election it's like you saw like a lot of like red light counties and stuff but it's like all those counties had like what 20 people in them like not really you know what i mean like they have yeah, like, but like, compa- like they're very you know, very small yeah exactly they're very very small compared compared to los angeles county which has 3 million people, you know? Like, just LA County has 3 million people, bro. Whereas, like, that could be the entire yeah. state of Kansas, for all I know. Like, I don't know that for sure. But, like, it's like, I wouldn't, like, be surprised if it was something that low. Because I know the population density isn't that big there, you know? Yeah, no, that's that's very, very true. Yeah, so it's like... I guess, like, a lot of countries have really good natural resources. Like... Russia has a lot of oil, you know, but it's like a lot of that land isn't usable too. Most of them live in like Western Russia, right? I honestly have no idea. Honestly, I don't really know either, but I'm pretty sure most of them live in like rest- Western Russia or like Eastern Russia, like towards like China. But then it's like in China too, there's a lot of like land that like isn't like usable either. But then you have like countries like Sweden and Denmark where like they have like, or Venezuela where they have tons and tons of oil like venezuela like leads the world in oil like by a large margin you know like more than the middle eastern countries like for sure and um it's like yeah like that can make a country like really wealthy but it's like then venezuela is also like a country that's like low-key falling apart so it's like your natural resources don't matter really 
Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you have the corruption that they have going on over there, it doesn't matter what you have. Yeah, you right. Have yeah. All the and, resources. And I don't know, dude. It's like the United States has like a lot of natural resources too. And it's like, we could do like a lot of the things that like these smaller countries like do, like in terms of like social programs, like healthcare and um, uh, what's it called? Um, like public education and stuff. Because like Sweden and Denmark and Norway, I think they all like base their like, um, education and like healthcare off of their oil profits and they like house only like a like one tenth as much oil as the united states does so it's like if the united states was just like exporting more oil instead and like just like cut like a little bit of our defense spending because we spend like almost a trillion dollars or something like in defense spending like if we just cut that down by like a couple hundred billion we would still be the leader by like three times or so you know yeah i mean it's, it's ridiculous that we like spend so much money on a on a military dude when, like i think you know, the, like i think the next closest military is china right like i think the next one like, in terms like of spending, that, I, yeah i think i think the u.s spends like 800 billion and china spends like 250 million or something or billion 250 billion so it's like we could literally cut it by like 200 billion. Three, we are over three times the amount yeah. that they spend. Yeah, Jesus. dude, we could still oh cut it God. by two time by 200 billion, and we would still be like three times higher than them. You know? So it's like, come on, man. Like, there's a lot of like budget allocation that like could be like done, and it's like, like we were talking about earlier with like corruption. Like, some European countries have like literally a council of ethics to like determine where their funds go. I mean, okay, that has to, now you're getting into the system itself, though, and, like, in theory, we have a system of checks and balances to, like, hold hold the country together, And but, like, this country's pretty corrupt, like, if we're really yeah. gonna look at it, yeah. like, holistically. Like, there's a lot, like, like there's racist laws, different, different, like, means to pushing po political agendas. Yeah. It's just, like, crazy, like... Not to get like super political, but and like just, just like noticing like, like the BLM movement itself. If you actually look at the hashtags for BLM during election years, there's a massive spike in it, and then right after the election, it's like non-existent. Yeah. It, it, it's it, like literally the graph for like it's like yeah it's like, like whoop, whoop, 2016. Like, yeah. All right, 2016 was like this. 2017, 18, 19, 20. And then back like to 21. Yeah, yeah. Dang. It's, it's it, it does seem it's very crazy like very how they can just use, yeah. use every four years, like it like the cycle tends to repeat itself, you know? And it's like That's why it's like you kinda can't I don't know. I don't I try not to take like any stance on like any political party. You know what I mean? Like I consider myself a centrist. So it's like you gotta just no, like see like patterns when like they're happening and try to like question it and not be like just so like blind and like ignorant to things you know and like all right what's a centrist first of all you actually just brought that i've never heard of that a what centrist is, like... a yeah, centrist is someone like, who falls like literally like on the central like line of like the political spectrum so like you know how in the political spectrum there's the left and then there's the right the left being um liberal slash democrat and then the right being conservative slash um republican there's also the top and then the south and the top is, I believe, um, communism and socialism. And then the bottom... Oh, no, no, no. The top is libertarianism. The top is libertarian. And then the bottom is communism and socialism. I, like... I've taken, like, multiple, like, political, like, exams and stuff. And I did so in my economics course and everything, too, when I was in college. And um, I fall... I fell literally every time, like, right in the center by, like, one percentage point. Like, Damn. every time I took okay. the test, I literally, like... It was like always like you know a really long really really long questionnaire about like how do you feel about these certain situations like what should be done you know in x y and z and um every time like i always fell within like 51 percent this 51 percent that or 51 percent this 49 percent that 51 percent the other side 49 percent the other side it was like never like more than one percent on like any side up or down like or like sideways okay yeah damn, so that's, that's actually pretty crazy yeah so that's why i, I didn't even myself. know that was a thing 
Yeah, like, I figured, why, obviously, like, it makes sense, but it was just, like, damn, like, I never, like, heard of, like, yeah, the term for that, it. Yeah, that's why I consider myself a centrist, because, like, I really didn't know, like, where I flew, like, fell on the political spectrum at some point. So, um, when I was taking economics, like, he had us take a test, and I was like, fuck yeah, and then, like, we had to take it at the beginning of the year, and then at the end of the year to see, like, how we, like, you know, changed, and I was exactly the fucking same. Damn. Yeah, like... That's actually, that's actually pretty cool. That's actually a pretty cool, like, college, like, experience right Yeah, there. it was pretty cool. Yeah, I liked it a lot, but... You know, college ain't free, man. So I stopped nah, going. Yeah. So I stopped going, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, uh, bro. Thanks again for watching this week's episode of Joint Minds. Guys, it's been a pleasure having you. And if you guys want to subscribe for more, more content, make sure you guys do that down below. While you're down there, comment your thoughts on what you think is the best country in the world and why. Make sure you guys hit that like button, and we'll see you next time. Joint Minds signing off. Peace. Peace.